turn to uh, page 51 in the text, in the old text. And in, in the new text, it's, it's titled The Ego and False Autonomy. And it's the first paragraph. I'm sorry, what page? 56 in the new. 56 in the new and 51 in the old. And it's the very first paragraph under e the ego and false autonomy. Jesus, Bill Thetford, I think when this was being dictated, Bill Thetford kind of, kind of said, how could, such a, how could such a thing have happened ever in the first place, you know? And Jesus, in a sense, this was incorporated into the text. Jesus says, it is reasonable to ask how the mind could ever have made the ego. In fact, it is the best question you could ask. There is, however, no point in giving an answer in terms of the past, because the past does not matter. And history would not exist if the same errors were not being repeated in the present. Abstract thought applies to knowledge because knowledge is completely impersonal, and examples are irrelevant to its understanding. Perception, however, is always specific, and therefore quite concrete. So in a sense of going on a witch hunt and looking back into the past and saying, you know, you know, how could the ego, how could this guilt have come about, or how could the ego have come about, Jesus is kind of saying, don't go looking, in a sense, in the past for, for the answer. You need to have a present experience. It's still happening now. Yeah, as long as you're still feeling upset in any way, then obviously, by your experience, you can tell that the same mistake is being repeated. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't answer the question of the premise, how could the mind have made the ego? Okay. I don't think that's answered. Then here we go. We'll go back now to the clarification of terms, which is at the back of the book. And we want to go down to the, it's on page 73 in the old book, it's the introduction to the clarification of terms. The fourth paragraph. Okay. The ego will demand many answers that this course does not get. It does not recognize as questions the mere form of a question to which an answer is impossible. The ego may ask, how did the impossible occur? To what did the impossible happen? It may ask this in many forms. Yet there is no answer, only an experience. Seek only this, and do not let theology delay you. In other words, that to really ask that question and to kind of get really bent on that question, like how could the impossible have happened, you can kind of go into a metaphysical, theological tailspin. But to ask the question, how could the impossible happen, there's an underlying assumption that's beneath the question. And what is the underlying assumption beneath how could the impossible happen? The impossible happened. So that the impossible could happen and has happened. Yeah. You, how, why would you ask how it happened unless you already believed that it did. it did? So you see where if Jesus answers this question, then that would be that makes the error real. You know, it's kind of like defining the ego. You know, if you really say I want a good solid definition of the ego, and, and in the next couple pages later, you know, Jesus will he just does not give a definition for the ego. But he does talk about the miracle, you know. He does talk about the right mind and the correction. The one, two, the, the third paragraph down, he says, there is no definition for a lie that serves to make it true. And in the fourth paragraph down, he says, we cannot make a definition for what the ego is, but we can say what it is not. And at that point, he goes in to describe the, the state of the miracle that this is a course in choosing the right mind, in choosing the miracle, but not into trying to analyze the ego. And we think we need to know what it is so we can avoid it. <laughs> but if we just get in the right mind, it's not an issue. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's dissolved in the right mind. At what point, if there's all this, you know, if I was at peace, all this stuff, if we, you know, universally was at peace, at what point, did we all, <laughs> all of us that are one, decide that we wanted to choose to experience life in this form? It's, it's really... It's a, it's a strange question, it's I know. A, it's, it's kind of a, it's another version of the one we just were talking about, about yeah. how the impossible happens. Traditionally, it's... The Course says that the ego asked the first question, and the first question was, what am I? 
Now, the Holy Spirit has got a good answer for that. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit comes immediately into the mind, you know, and the Holy Spirit's answer, of course, is you are the Holy Son of God Himself, infinite, perfect, and created in the likeness and image of your of your Father. But remember... Why would we just know that? that in an we instant, do. We do know. It's buried, yeah. though. We haven't woke up to it. Remember, I, remember last night in the storybook I said about how the mind ran, literally kind of ran from the light in an instant of terror, because the, the ego belief is that, you know, God's going to get you, <laughs> because you've really pulled it off now, you've done, ooh, you've done a terrible thing. So the mind, in a sense, was terrified and, and moved into the darkness, away from the light. And the ego gave an answer to that question, too, what am I? It's like, here you are, you're um, a world, in a body, a body in a world, you know, and kind of like, that's its answer. And not only that, but you can make yourself. You and so for an instant, we believed ego. For one instant. Mm -hmm. for, that's all it is. is the, the Course says, the Course calls it the unholy instant is, is the instant. Now, if we talk about time, here's the unholy instant where that, that tiny belief was, was believed in. And here's the... Here comes the Holy Spirit as simultaneously as the answer to that. Right there in the mind. In other words, God placed the answer to the insanity right where the insanity was. He didn't put the answer out in the world. Because that's not where the puff is. The puff's in the mind. So he placed the answer right where the problem was. But the mind is so terrified of that light that it, it kind of moved out towards the form. And got engaged in bodies and survival and, you know... All kinds of judgment. <laughs> yeah, Bill's got a, a lesson 223, which is God is my life. I have no life of, but His. I was mistaken when I thought I lived apart from God, a separate entity that moved in isolation, unattached, and housed within a body. Now I know my life is God. I have no other home, and I do not exist apart from Him. He has no thoughts that are not part of me, and I have none but those which are of him.